guys, good morning. We're here with the sixth graders of Elaine Schlother Intermediate School in Cibolo. I've got a guest Woo! assistant today. It's Sarah Costa. This is Science with the Sarahs. We're making bottle rockets with vinegar and baking soda, and we say good morning, San Antonio! We'll see you in a bit. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. I feel like decaf compared to a whole <laughs> pot of coffee. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, March 29th. How do you top that? Uh, you don't. You, don't? <laughs> you just wait to see the two Sarahs, but we're going to check in with weather and traffic in just a minute. We'll start with you, Justin. You have to follow it now. I don't know if I can, man. The, the vinegar and the dancing, it was it was all good. <laughs> oh, Science with Sarah is also now sponsored by Red Bull, so I just want to let you know that, too. <laughs> Uh, that's awesome. I can't wait to see it. It should be fun this morning. Uh, let's take a look at what we have going on here locally. We've got some temperatures that are on the cool side, but first we've got to start with the pollen count because this is the big story this morning. Oak in the very high category, 11,720. It jumped up big time today. We are in the midst of oak season, probably starting to reach the peak. But just a heads up, oak is really bad today. As we look at the forecast, it's going to be cloudy most of the day. There could be a few peaks of sun later this afternoon. We're still going to get some breezy winds, too. Temperatures only make their way up to 68. So this is below average, another cool day. But from here, things really do start to warm up. And uh, we'll see some much warmer temperatures coming in tomorrow. Here's a look at some of the weather headlines. We'll see a damp Thursday morning, drizzle, humidity return, and then a pretty warm Friday. 80s are back in the forecast with an evening front and then by the weekend we've got a small chance of rain but it is warmer and wait till you see the temperatures next week it's almost summer like so a lot of flip-flopping here and as you look off in the distance Sarah in the live game you can see a little sun's trying to shine through uh, so we'll talk more about that forecast here in just a few minutes, but I know it's been a busy morning for Steven over there. What's the latest on the morning commute? Well, things seem to be quieting down over here, so some quiet is good. You know, we'll talk to the Sarahs a little bit later on, and they'll change that for us, but let's get a look at the commute right now. 281 there at St. Mary's, yeah, a lot better than what we saw a little bit earlier. US 90 at Military, yeah, very quiet start right now, but earlier there was a plethora of problems out on the roadways, and that led to some big backups. So we're going to go ahead and start here with a wide look at the metropolitan area a lot better than what we saw about maybe 30 minutes or so ago. We do have at least one crash that was linger lingering around part of me for a little while there at Loop 410 eastbound at Perrin Bidle. Looks like that is cleared out, so better news to report, but still a slight slowdown here off 37 northbound at Cesar Chavez Boulevard due to another crash. Um, it looks like that's still active, but just watch out as you get the commute rolling. There were a few things that were popping up here on our map that have cleared out already. I-10 eastbound at Woodlawn Avenue. That crash is cleared and so has the backup that it caused. But all Always be prepared before you go. You can scan the QR code that's now on your screen. That takes you to our KSAT traffic page and it has a full list of closures, has a full list of incidents. We got it all on there, so make sure to plan your commute ahead of time. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. We have some new information on a deadly incident overnight. San Antonio police have arrested the driver accused of hitting a man with his truck and then taking off. It happened around midnight at the intersection of Calabra Road and Northwest 36th Street on our city's west side. Police say the man was crossing the street, but not in a crosswalk when he was hit. Now, according to police, the driver did stop initially, but then took off only to return to the scene a short time later. Now, the man hit died from his injuries, and the driver is now being charged with failure to stop and render aid, resulting in death. Here's a chance to get caught up on the rest of the day's news. We call it the 9 at 9. A setback for former President Donald Trump in the January 6th investigation. A judge issued a ruling on key testimony from former Vice President Mike Pence. The Associated Press reports Pence will not have to answer questions about his actions on January 6th, but he would have to testify about any potential illegal acts committed by Trump. Pence says his team is evaluating the judge's ruling. Tonight, the city of Nashville is scheduled to hold a vigil to remember the victims of the Covenant School shooting. It comes amid new details about the shooter. Police say the shooter was being treated for an emotional disorder and legally bought the guns she used to murder three children and three adults. A specific motive still being determined. The latest school shooting has some lawmakers calling for gun control again. President Biden wants Congress to work on an assault weapons ban. However, Republicans are in charge of the House and there's still little to no support for weapons restrictions, which some say infringes on constitutional rights. 
New data from the CDC shows firearms were the leading cause of death among children and adolescents in 2021 for the second year in a row. Firearms first surpassed motor vehicle crashes as the leading cause of death for children in 2020. In 2021, more than 4,700 children between the ages of 1 to 19 died from firearms. In comparison, about 4,300 children died in car accidents that same year. President Biden is planning on visiting Mississippi after devastating tornadoes damaged much of the state. Severe weather killed at least 26 people and injured dozens of others in the deep south over the weekend. Some of the worst damage was in Mississippi. Tornadoes there leveled neighborhoods and knocked out power to thousands of people. Americans are feeling a little more confident about the economy. The conference board now says its consumer confidence index inched up in this month after dropping for two months in a row. The index pushed up by optimism about the short-term future for their finances. A well-known national home price index fell 0.2% in January compared to the month before. It's the seventh straight month of declines for the index, with rates for a 30-year fixed-rate mortgage now at nearly 6.5%. Tech stocks slipping in yesterday's trading with some investors worried about interest rates going up even more. NASDAQ finished the day down 0.4%, the S&P closed down 0.2%, and the Dow slipped 0.1%. Apple is now offering a new way to pay for a new iPhone or Mac. Within the next few weeks, it'll start offering its own Buy Now, Pay Later program. Apple's version will be integrated with Apple Pay and will require customers to use a debit card or bank account to make the payments. And that's today's 9 at 9. In your other morning headlines, new video from a chase in California that ended with a man jumping from a speeding car. And it turns out egg yolk could be the secret ingredient for some of the world's most iconic pieces of art. RJ Marquez joins us live in the studio with these stories and more. Hey, RJ. Yeah, guys. Uh, who would have known egg yolk? Right? Yeah. Leading to now we can all make our very own Mona Lisa if we want to. Probably not. But uh, we'll talk about that here in just a bit. But first of all, starting off with this new video this morning of a man who stole a California Highway Patrol car and later died after he jumped from the vehicle during a high-speed chase. So this all started when the suspect got into a crash and then got inside the cruiser while an officer was responding to this crash. The suspect took off in the cruiser and led officers on a chase for miles while the CHP used a spike strip to end the chase while it shredded one of the patrol car's tires and within seconds, you can see right there, there, the suspect opened the door, ultimately jumping to his death. Now, we did not show you this video there of him actually getting out of the vehicle. The car was traveling at around 45 miles per hour. Officers are not sure why the man jumped from the moving car, besides the fact that he was in that high-speed chase. The cruiser crashed into a power pole after the man jumped, but no one else was injured in this chase and crash there. Okay, moving on to this other story here. This is really an amazing story of a former pizza delivery driver and a bit of an update here who risked his life to save five children from a burning house. Now you may remember last year, Nicholas Bostic, this is the individual's name. He is now set to receive what's considered the nation's high, highest honor for civilian heroism. Last July, you see this video right here. Bostic was driving in an Indiana town when he saw a house fire. He ran into the house and found four children sleeping inside and got them all out. Well, it turns out there was someone else inside and he went back in there to get another young girl out of the home and they had to jump out of a second story window to escape. You're looking at body cam footage here from Mr. Bostic after this incident. So he spent three days in the hospital due to burns, smoke inhalation, and other injuries. So the Carnegie Hero Commission says its medal here for Mr. Bostic is for people in the U.S. and Canada who risk extreme dangers to save others. Good for him. All right, so when you think of some of the most iconic paintings in the world, chances are you don't think of egg yolk, but apparently that's a secret ingredient in many of the classic works of art. So according to a new study, old masters like Da Vinci, Sandro Botticelli, and Rembrandt may have used egg yolk in their oil paintings. Trace quantities of protein have been detected in these classic paintings. Researchers originally thought that it was contamination, but now say that they believe it was intentional. They say adding egg yolk could tune the properties of the oil paint in very drastic ways, such as showing age and brush strokes differently. It would also make the paint more resistant to humidity. Very interesting research there. 
Okay, now this last story. We go to Michigan, we're a teen there. You can see him standing right here behind me. He doesn't have much trouble standing out. That's because he's 6'10", only 14 years old, but what he does have trouble with, finding shoes that fit. So here's Eric Kilborn and his size 24 feet. Yes, size 24 feet. So Eric says not having the right size shoe has been a constant pain throughout his life. Well, now Under Armour is stepping up, no pun there, stepping up to help Eric out. So Under Armour execs flew to Michigan recently to get a proper measurement of Eric's feet, which included a digital scan because making a shoe this big enough for this teen is no easy task. Eric and his parents are obviously thrilled. Um, I've been in this industry almost 30 years and I have never seen anything bigger than a 22. Personally, I've never worked on anything bigger than around a 20. I'm going to be able to play better on the field. Um, I'm going to have shoes that I'm comfortable in, no blisters, no ingrown toenails, none of that stuff. All right, good news there for Eric's there. So Under Armour says that this is the largest shoe that they have ever had to build. And guys, I was doing some research here because I was curious. I remember Shaq had oh, yeah. similar issues like this yeah, when he yeah. was at Cole High School right here in San Antonio. Yeah. Uh, Shaq had a size 22 foot. So this is two sizes higher than what Bigger. Shaq was. Wow. Yes. And, and he's, he's still 14. A kid. He's 14. 14 oh my years goodness. Old. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. I want to know who's scouting this kid already. Uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. need to look up that information. Right. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure a lot of schools probably very interested. He looks yes. like Texas or A&M or probably Oklahoma those, material, yeah. right? Just got to make sure they get the right footwear for him. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. And yeah. he's got to want to play as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We'll be Art. looking out for Eric in the future. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Thank guys. you very much, RJ. Right now we're at 909, 58 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. While most people are going to sleep, these officers are just getting up. Katrina Weber got to join some Animal Care Services officers on their overnight shift to see how they help the public and police with animal calls during the night. But first. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. Take a look around. We are here in the gorgeous new Jefferson Bank headquarters. We're going to tell you what it's going to be used for. It's going to be much more than a bank. I'm going to tell you when it's going to open in just a few moments. And right now we're taking a live look where both our Sarah's Acosta and Spivey are standing by to talk about today's Science with Sarah experiment. Stay tuned. 913, welcome back. We continue to see, to see significant investments in and around downtown San Antonio. And part of that is construction. We have discussed the new Jefferson Bank headquarters right on Broadway. And now we are just a few weeks from opening their doors. Max Massey joins us live from the construction site. Max, you say this is so much more than just a bank, right? It is so much more than just a bank. And guys, you say construction site, but take a look around. I mean, by and large, this is done. This is amazing. It's beautiful. It's huge. And you can't drive by it without turning your head and saying, what is going on over there? So we're joined with Paul. So, Paul, we said this is much more than just a bank. What does this mean for the community? Yeah, well, Max, thank you. Thank you for having us. Uh, you know, this is a building that we embarked on about five years ago we, in the planning. Uh, the idea was to build it for our employees. So we've built a building that is here for the next hopeful 50 years uh, to where our employees can enjoy their work environment. Uh, it's here in this wonderful part of San Antonio in the Pearl District. Uh, it's a place that we feel like we can help recruit top talent and retain top talent. Uh, so we're very excited to, to be seeing the final months of the project and uh, we're, we're just love it. Uh, now, there's also a retail component on the first floor, and so uh, aside from our employees, we've got some great restaurants going in. There's been an article written about 19 High Q, which is a, a sushi restaurant that Houston Carpenter, a young restaurant entrepreneur that a lot of folks have uh, read about. Um, it's going to be just high-end, the best sushi that uh, San Antonio has seen. We have uh, some other restaurants that we're excited about. Uh, that have signed leases, so min much more coming. And then, of course, in the uh, rest of the building, we only occupy about half of it now, um, but we'll have Jackson Walker, one of San Antonio's premier and largest law firms. It'll be on the 11th and 12th floor. All right, so we have restaurants, we have retail, we have more than $100 million devoted to this building. When does it open? Well, our employees are moving in now. We've moved about 250 people in. Uh, we have another month and a half or so of construction before we can move the final folks in. But uh, 
Our retail bank should be open hopefully in the next two weeks downstairs. Uh, so we'll be able to, to uh, uh, focus on retail customers on the first floor. Last question for you because we're running out of time. Obviously, there's been some turmoil discussed when it comes to community banks around the country. You know, what is your message to Jefferson Bank customers? Well, I'm getting that question a lot. And the, the message I would say is community banking is sound. It's the backbone of America. Uh, community banking in San Antonio is sound. Uh, we are a different model. It's not the model that you saw with the banks that struggled uh, that failed. Uh, we are just as strong as we've ever been. Asset quality is as strong as it's ever been. And, and so uh, we're here for the community. Uh, in fact, we're seeing uh, uh, growth in deposits across all of our banking centers right now. All right, Paul, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Yeah, Max, thank you. And Mark, Stephanie, guys, we are going to have so much more coming up on the news at noon and ksat.com. We're going to talk about expansion to Austin. We're going to talk about leadership changes. We're going to be talking about the future of Jefferson Bank here in San Antonio. Back to you. Did Max Massey just okay. become our business and banking reporter? <laughs> I think be prepared. It's a, I think it's his beat now, and that's not a bad thing. Max, thank you. Bye, Max. All right, let's go outside with live cam. And if you are tracking the pollen count lately, and a lot of you are for obvious reasons. Justin has a important update today. Yeah, Oak jumped into the very high category and when we posted it on Facebook, the reactions weren't, they weren't good. Uh, right. People were pretty upset. I get it. We are in the thick of Oak season. Everything's yellow. You see all the little catkins everywhere. Uh, it just is what it is. Uh, hopefully this is the peak and we'll, we'll start to get on the back side of it here pretty soon. But today is bad day for Oak mm. uh, if that's something that bugs you. Temperatures are cool. We're at uh, forecasting 68 this afternoon, mostly cloudy and cool. Uh, we're not going to see a lot of sun today. There could be some, but more clouds for sure. And this is below average. Right now, we would typically see temperatures averaging in the mid 70s. So this is well below that number. Uh, but by tomorrow, look at the change. We're at a 78 on Thursday, warmer, humid and drizzly. And that's because we get a warm front overnight. So that's the changes that we have ahead. Jacket today, maybe not so much tomorrow. And as we look down the line, there's that warm up to 78. We go all the way up to 87 on Friday for a front knocks us back down a little bit over the weekend, but still above average. And look at the numbers Monday and Tuesday. So if you're a fan of the cool weather, enjoy today. If you're a fan of the hot weather, you'll have to wait until next week, but it will get hot. 58 right now and cloudy. Dew point is at 37. We've got northeasterly winds at about 8 miles per hour. And here's your case at 12 hour forecast, 62 at noon. We'll keep it cloudy. Again, there could be a few breaks in those clouds as we get later into today. We're topping out around 68, uh, close to 4 or 5 o'clock. And then by tonight, clouds will start to thicken up, especially as we get towards midnight. And then we start to add in some chances of drizzle and showers. I'll show you that here in just a second. First, though, we've got some rain across East Texas. That's moving away. It's a little uh, impulse or piece of energy in the atmosphere that has moved through, and we're kind of on the back side of it now. We did pick up a little bit of rain yesterday, which was nice in spots. Not everybody, but in spots there were uh, some showers and storms. Uh, take a look at this thing off of the West Coast. This is a bowling ball of a storm. I'm mean, very impressive. It has produced a ton of snow, a ton of rain for California. They're gonna, going to get even more, more flooding. On water vapor, you can really see it. Look at the size of this thing. So some of this energy does move towards us, helps to pull a front through on Friday, but we don't get that kind of rain chances they're getting out that they're getting out in California. One thing it does do though, out ahead of it, by tonight we'll start to see the the dew point increase. So we'll go from Pretty dry air today, at least at the surface, up to dew points in the 60s by tomorrow morning. And what that does, and when we generally see the moisture increase like that, uh, drizzle and light showers uh, develop. And so as we fast for forward here to midnight, you're starting to see some drizzle and maybe some patchy fog develop. And then by tomorrow morning, showers, a pretty good bet, I think, showers and drizzle, so a wet Thursday morning commute. Grab the umbrella. It's going to be the light stuff. It's not going to add up too much, but you know how this goes. The, the wet roads and a lot of times it slows down the morning commute. By midday, showers are starting to shift east a little bit, but we'll keep in a 20% chance of rain and then taper it off to a 10% by dinner time. So rain chances probably best tomorrow, but this is an important rain. This is just drizzly stuff. And then small chances Friday, Saturday 
and Sunday as our front comes through on Friday, but kind of stalls over the weekend. So that'll still give us a chance for a shower or a storm, but it will be isolated. So uh, there's the extended forecast all put together there with temperatures and rain chances. Uh, again, 90 on Monday, 92 on Tuesday. It's hot next week, but cool today. Sounds good. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. Time now, 921 and 58 degrees for now. S the Sarahs are out at Schlather Intermediate School in Sobolo. Science with Sarah is coming up next. All right, time check is 925. I am back, guys, and unfortunately, I do not bring a good update with me. Let's get a look here at 410. Now, this shot is actually at Cherry Ridge. You can see that at least three lanes are blocked off right now due to a pretty serious crash. I'll take a step out, and you can see that we have first responders, of course, out there on the scene. Uh, tough to see how many vehicles are involved. It does look at least two there. Uh, earlier, there was at least one on a tow truck, so possibly three. But we can work to get some information for you. But we also have San Antonio Fire Department on the scene as well. So. A pretty serious incident that has been reported causing a slowdown for anyone that may be trying to get into the eastbound lanes from 410. I wouldn't say that we're seeing a huge stretch of traffic, but anytime that stretch of red shows up, it's never a good sign. But we will watch that area very closely and bring you those updates as they become available. But right now, the look at the metropolitan area, things are still fine here for the most part. But we have to keep posted here at 410 at Cherry Ridge. Again, eastbound lanes, at least three lanes are blocked off at this time. If uh, needed, I'll come back and see if we have a better update to report guys. Appreciate that. Thank you, Stephen. It's time for a new science with Sarah and today. Sarah Spivey is out at Schlather Intermediate School in Cibolo. That's right, and she will be making soda bottle rockets with some sixth graders over there. And since our David Sears is off this week, she has a substitute <laughs> assistant today. Good morning, ladies. It's the Sarahs. <laughs> Good, Good morning. morning. Yes, it's science with Sarah. Check that out. She had to be specific. This Check is that out. Costa Spivey's assistant. We didn't want to confuse anybody. Yeah, we are uh, live at Elaine Schlother Intermediate School here in Cibolo. We're making bottle rockets and Sarah, are you ready to do this? I'm ready. We tested this out the KSAT courtyard and whew. woo, it was fun. It okay, was fun. So here's some okay. materials you need. First, I need you to build your rocket. Okay. So what you'll do is you will um, tape three pencils here to the side. Let's first make sure your cork fits in the middle. So that way, yep, fits good. Okay. Okay, actually, I'm going to use this one. Okay, I already tested good. that one out. Okay. Other way, Sarah. So No, no, uh, this way is going to stay better. No, let me tell you. got to flip the bottle around. Oh, I don't, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, so this way. Yeah. Okay, but I want the erasers because the erasers we have found uh, make a better kind of yeah, landing Yeah, let's make pad. this go down a little bit. Right more there? Here. Yep. Okay. Should be good. Okay. Go ahead and do three of those. KSAT pencils. KSAT pencils. Plug. We're staying on brand here. Um, we've also got some hot pink gaffers tape because, it, again, it's science with the Sarahs today. Yes. I sorry, like sorry, David. He's out on Sears. vacation. Enjoy He's having vacation. a good time. Okay, so Sarah's made her stand. All okay. right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to pour some vinegar. Let's test and see how that stands. Yeah. Why don't we use mine that I've already made? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, that works. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's Tripod. go ahead and put some vinegar in there. Got it? All right, yeah. so we're going to put... About two inches? Yeah. Sounds about right. It's so we're going to briefly over, overcome the force of gravity using a chemical reaction. Now we're going to make a baking soda bundle. All right, with baking soda and tissue. About um, how much baking soda are you putting in you there? You know what? I'm like, saying like, like a about teaspoon? a tablespoon. Tablespoon? Okay. Okay. And do you want me to do this or do you want to do it? Uh, you can do it. Okay. Here we go. We're going to set this off. You guys ready? Yes, yes. Go, go, quickly, quickly, quickly. because you don't want to get vinegar in your eye. We, we just did this. These awesome sixth graders are going to do this when we come back from the break. Are you guys ready? Yeah! 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 yeah. 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 High five!
Lane Slaughter Intermediate School with Science with the Sarahs today. These awesome sixth graders are ready to set off their bottle rockets. Are you guys ready? Yeah! Okay, first group, go! Let's see, let's see these rockets. Maybe don't use your mouth to undo the cork. Let's be safe here. Oh, we got one rocket Whoa. down. One rocket exploded. Let's see, is this one going to pop? Whoa! Whoa! That one went super high. Whoa! <laughs> Sarah and I are in the splash zone here. Okay. Oh, oh. man. All right, second group. Go. All right, second group. Let's see. Put your rockets down. Remember, as soon as it's down, put it down. Now move back up. That's going to be a good one. I think it's going to be a good one. I'm thinking 20 feet. I'm thinking, oh no, oh, it's coming right towards me. <laughs> oh, look, this one is leaking a little. So the cork was not on it oh, tight enough. We don't have a lot of good uh, structured stands here. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Okay. Okay, well, third group. All right, clear the group. rockets. Let's go. Did this one ever go? Oh, oh watch out. out. <laughs> okay, next group, go. Go ahead and go. That's a really big Whoa. one, and I'm okay. Whoa! Whoa! There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. Yeah. Okay. Fourth. We have group, one go. more. All right. Go ahead and go. I wouldn't stand right there. There you go. <laughs> There you go. That's going to be a good one right there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Whoa, Robert. Well, Robert, our photographer, is definitely in the splash zone. Who's next? All right. Last but not least, fifth group. Go. Let's see. Oh, Big Red. Oh. These kids are going to smell like vinegar all day. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. I don't know. This Diet Pepsi one looks like it's going to. Oh. 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 Wow. Delayed reaction move. All right. Hey, who has. Okay. Who has a, a, a gravity joke? Someone have a gravity joke? Oh, since we're talking about gravity day, what is your gravity joke? Everything was great until gravity invent was invented. After that, things went downhill. That's a good one. Uh, pretty All good. Right, who can tell me? Who can tell me? How did the science experiment work? How did the science experiment work? Uh, the vinegar dissolved the baking soda and made a like some like what it, chemical and then it, chemical reaction. Yeah, chemical reaction. Or something. What what was the force that kept the bottle down? Uh, gravity. Okay, and then what was the force that shot the rocket up? Uh, this. You got the T. T H. Thrust. Thrust. There you go. Awesome. You got it, man. Yeah. And what created the thrust? The chem. The chemical reaction of of the baking soda mi mixing with the vinegar, which caused a gas to form, yeah. which created the thrust. Perfect. And you had a gravity joke, didn't you? Or an right? alien joke, yes. or a space joke. What's yes. your joke? Why do, how do you get an alien to go to sleep? How? You rock it. Oh, oh that was awesome! Yeah! Pretty okay, good. what did you guys think about this experiment? Yeah. Oh, that was real close. That was a close right, call. Everyone, say hey to your parents at home. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday! Oh, oh man! I love this. You know what? Oh, it's it's only 9:36 a.m. and they have the rest of the school day to go. Yes, How are you going to top that? Good luck, teachers. <laughs> Good luck, teachers. <laughs> uh, outside with live cam, the sun is shining right on the terminals and the parking garage out at San Antonio International Airport. Isn't that a beautiful shot? Yeah. So much energy, by the way, at the school. I love that. Uh, but you see the, the sun starting to shine through. We've got a little hole in the clouds right over the airport right now. It's generally going to be a pretty cloudy day, but some breaks going on at this moment. I want to show you a great picture from yesterday. 
this was uh, out of Woodlawn Lake. Uh, Taylor who always takes some great photos. You can see some of the rain coming down. We had some of those uh, rain, you call them rain shafts. You can see some of them there in the distance. And uh, it, we did see a little bit of rain here across the city. Not a lot, but some, and that's a beautiful shot there. Taylor, we appreciate you sending that in. Here's look at the uh, satellite picture, and I mentioned that kind of hole right over the airport. You can almost see it here on a satellite picture. You got to look pretty close there, right around San Antonio, uh, but it is there. Uh, we'll see those clouds probably fill back in, and I can actually let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Yeah, hey, see right there, a little break, right over 281. But uh, generally, it is going to be a cloudy day. And there's the scene again at the airport with the sun shining there for the moment. 58 degrees, dew point is at 37. And here's our case at 12 hour forecast. 62 at noontime we will call for highs right around 68 today. So still a cool day, but this is our last day below average because as we get into tomorrow, humidity, warmth return. And we're going to start off pretty damp tomorrow, too. I think we'll talk more about the potential for drizzle. And we'll revisit the whole oak situation too coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Let's check out a slowdown spot we saw just uh, minutes ago, but things have now cleared up at 410. And Cherry Ridge traffic is moving well in both directions. Property tax values are expected to go up this year, but during yesterday's KSAT Q&A, Stephen Myra spoke with Bear County Appraisal District Chief, who says not as much as years past. This is due to the market cooling down in terms of buying, despite the average sale price rising. Values in Bear County on average up 15.8% countywide. As always, you can contest the value of your home through an appeal. Let's just try to get it as close to right as we can. And, and like I said, 90 to 94 percent of the time we end up settling these things. My staff understands it. Everybody's under stress financially right now. And certainly my staff is no different. We own homes. We pay taxes here in Bear County, too. The average home in Bear County is now uh, worth around three hundred forty two thousand dollars, according to the Bear County Appraisal District. If you miss yesterday's Q&A, you can watch it again right now on the KSAT YouTube channel. Animal care services is always on the job and certain ACS officers are learning what goes on on the streets while most people are sleeping. Katrina Weber spent some time with one team on the overnight shift. It shows us how animal care services helps the public and police. Third shift, you know, is an entirely different creature than day shift. Nothing will prepare you for what we see overnight. Even after almost a year. Good boy. Trinity Guevara herself is still getting used to it. Yep. The job she does for animal care services. Oh, yes. Along with partner Estefan Centeno has them answering the call of the wild and the domesticated all night long. She's got the food, she's got water, blanket pads. Either someone's really nice or maybe somebody dumped her. On this night, they take in a stray dog that neighbors found in distress. You okay? She looks good, definitely pregnant. They're one of two teams on ACS's relatively new overnight shift from 7 p.m. until 5 in the morning. Animal care services! Around midnight, there's a call from a couple about a stray kitty hurting from a cat fight. We didn't know what else to do. Like, he's a community cat, so... Like, we, we just felt bad. Helping people and pets is only part of the job. This team also helps police take in animals at the scene of a crime. When this overnight shift starts, they just never know what kinds of calls they're going to get. It could be something as simple as an injured cat or a pack of wild dogs. And everything I feel that my team does is very fulfilling and helpful with the city. The type of calls uh, that we respond to. It's a lot more than people think. They go the extra miles this night to get that injured cat to a vet. And you just clean it up, put them on antibiotics, put them some pain medication. After getting patched up, this feline can be put up for adoption. Then spend his days with a loving family thanks to one night's work by this ACS team. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. 941, 59 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. When we come back, the most common areas around your home that often get forgotten about when doing spring cleaning. 944, welcome back. Just have one question. Why do people do this? Why do they not set it up somewhere so it can oh. dry off, right? Yeah. I yeah, guess no big deal. Maybe they're in a hurry. Maybe so. If you're getting ready to do some spring cleaning stuff, this next story is for you. <laughs> As you check off your to-do list this year, ABC's Alexis Christophers has some spots you may want to add to that list that are often missed during this annual ritual.
Planning to start fresh this spring with a clean house? Perry Santanacho at Consumer Reports shares some tips to make sure you leave no dust bunny unturned, starting with the couch you use every day. Moving the sofa out from the wall, vacuuming the carpet, the flooring, and using special attachments on your vacuum to get into the sofa's crevices. The ceiling fan is another area for dust to collect, so don't forget to wipe down the blades. One hack that we love is just using an old pillowcase and slinging it over each of those blades and just wiping it off. That way that dust doesn't fall on the floor or all over you and it's just contained in that little sack that you can wash. Don't neglect the laundry room. We all know to clean the lint trap on the dryer after each load. Lint is a fire hazard, but once in a while you should do a deep clean too. That usually involves like getting some kind of lint trap cleaning kit, which is like a long hose that attaches to your vacuum and it can get all the way in there and suck all that stuff out. After the lint trap, disconnect your dryer from the power source, slide the dryer out from the wall and vacuum the duct too. And as you're scrubbing down the bathroom, look up. Is your shower head clogged with scaly mineral deposits? You can descale it by filling a plastic bag with vinegar and attaching it to the shower head. Use a twist tie or a rubber band to attach it to the shower head and just tie it so it's submerged and leave it there for a few hours and then remove the bag, you know, turn the shower head on, rinse it out and you're good to go. And do not skip the toothbrush holder. The toothbrush holder is basically a dark and damp space, which is a breeding ground for mildew and mold and God knows what other bacteria and germs. If it's dishwasher safe, pop it in with a load of dishes or hand wash it with hot soapy water. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. Unfortunately, guys, I'm back again, and it's uh, still not a good update here. 281 North at Loop 1604. Okay, we told you about a crash that was reported along Loop 410. That's already cleared, but as soon as that cleared, this new incident popped up there, and you can't really see it because it's under those flyover ramps, but I was speaking to our friends at TransGuide. It does look like this is at 1604 westbound, and in fact, as we take a step out of that shot there, uh, you can see almost uh, what looks to be like paramedics out there on the scene. It's very tough because the shot is a little grainy, but traffic right now down to just one lane. So if you're traveling maybe north on 281 and have to get on a 1604 West, yeah, you're going to see that nasty buildup out there. It's not a pretty sight, but we're watching it closely and it's an important area because there's a lot of traffic that travels through there. So yeah, anytime an incident pops up, it makes it a little bit worse. But as we give you a wide look at the map, a little bit more relief here. Plenty of green, still some active construction spots, but uh, not a good shot to have or time to have an incident here at 281 North at Loop 1604. Again, a crash reported there in the westbound lanes. We'll watch it closely. I mean, it doesn't it's not being reported as a major crash right now, but it's still something to keep a very close eye on. Let's hope everyone's doing OK and let's give first responders plenty of room to get the job done, guys. Thank you, Stephen. If oak pollen was a stock, we'd be rich today. Mm -hmm. This yeah, is way true. up there. It is uh, above 10,000 for the first time this season. This is in the very high category. Once it gets into the very high category, it really does affect a lot of people. So I want to show you the number first, 11,720. We do have molds, grass, and hackberry, but they're all... Uh, fairly low. Here's the graph that kind of gives you an idea of where we are. Now, we typically peak just after the 1st of April, uh, so we're getting there. This may be a little early. I, I'm hoping that we're peaking early and that we can get on the back side of this and start to see these numbers come down. Uh, but we still may have a couple more weeks here where uh, oak numbers are sig significantly higher. Uh, so just heads up, uh, that's where we stand today. That is the highest number so far this season. As we go outside for you, 58. That break in the clouds has since gone, and now we're back to cloudy conditions at the airport. Two point is at 37. Northeasterly winds at about 8 miles per hour. Here's the satellite picture in. That little break was right there. Pretty interesting to see that uh, develop. That little break's working towards New Braunfels. So a little bit of sun there. But as you look back off to the west, it's full cloudiness, and uh, that's probably, probably what we're going to see the rest of the day. I can't rule out some breaks here and there, but uh, mostly cloudy. And 61 Port SA, 60 Stinson, 59 in Randolph, 58 right now in Holotus. It's cool. Temperatures, because of the clouds, aren't going to warm up all that much today. Uh, a little bit. Uh, we're thinking upper 60s. 62 noontime, 64 at 1 o'clock, and we top out around 68 for a high. That is below average. It's been a couple of cool days here, but uh, by tonight, moisture starts to surge back in, and we're going to flip the script here, and we're going to go above average starting tomorrow. And it really only gets warmer from there. Uh, the big picture across Texas, 
Uh, you notice we've got some showers working through far east Texas. This was a little piece of energy that came through yesterday. It did bring some rain to parts of San Antonio. Not everyone got rain, but there were some showers and even a couple of thunderstorms. That is pushing east. We're on the back side of it now, so I don't really expect much rain today. And as we look out to the west, our next storm system is swirling off the coast of California. Boy, this is a whopper of a system. They continue to see big time rain and snow across California. And here we go again. Uh, the swirl right there. Some of this energy does move towards Texas, brings front through on Friday. Doesn't bring us great rain chances, though, unfortunately. One thing we are going to notice, though, out ahead of this storm system is an increase in moisture. So we're fairly dry right now. You see the brown color representing very dry to dry air. By the time we get into uh, tomorrow morning, uh, the moisture will start to uh, really increase. And you'll see these uh, dew points jump up into the 60s uh, by tomorrow morning, and that will allow for drizzle to develop. We, we know how this pattern works, right? Once that moisture shoves back in, we start to get fog and just kind of damp conditions, and that's exactly what I think we see tomorrow morning. So by midnight, drizzle begins to develop. And then by 6, 7 a.m., we've got a 40% chance of light, light drizzle or showers. This isn't going to fill up the rain gauge, but it will make for wet roads, just kind of a nuisance thing. You will probably want the umbrella as you head out the door tomorrow. And then by the midday hour, noon, it's starting to move away. And by tomorrow afternoon, other than maybe a shower or two, it's just mostly cloudy. From there, uh, we'll go 87 Friday. Friday's a day in which we'll probably see clouds early and then some breaks in the clouds late in the day. It's still a small chance of rain with a frontal battery. The front doesn't really cool us down that much. We're in the low 80s Saturday. Still a small chance for showers. This front kind of retreats back to the north both Saturday and Sunday. So we'll have a weak frontal battery around. That may be enough to scare up a shower or storm. And then after that, the heat kicks in. Monday and Tuesday are going to be awful hot. Right now we're looking at low 90s. Good news there is it does look like we get a front midweek next week that would bump temperatures back down. That would be good after reaching the 90s. Yeah, you know, the unfortunate part here still is we're not getting the good significant rain. It's still not in the forecast. All right, we'll wait for next time. Keep waiting. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. Night 52, 59 degrees. We'll be right back. The Spurs play their last true home game tonight at the AT&T Center this season. Their other two home games will be up in Austin at Moody Center. Tip off tonight at 7 o'clock against the Utah Jazz. We'll have highlights coming up on the night beat at 10. Okay, so we're back, and uh, things still aren't moving very quickly here at 281 at north at Loop 1604 north. But remember, this is in the westbound lanes of 1604, and right now traffic is just down to one lane. They could be in the clearing stages right now, guys. It's very tough to say because that overpass has blocked a good portion of the roadway there. But this is, again, one of those heavily traveled areas, and it's been just such a mess out on the roads the last few days. So hopefully tomorrow the commute won't be too bad. Justin. It'll be a little drizzly tomorrow morning, uh -oh. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> yeah, okay. We'll prepare. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today.